So we are going to talk about why orthogonal matrices satisfy the equation A transpose A equals the identity. Now first of all, the definition of a matrix being orthogonal is that its columns are orthonormal vectors. So anytime we have a matrix, we can think about the columns of the matrix as vectors. So let's say the first column is the vector we'll call V, and its coordinates are V1, V2, and so on all the way to Vn. And then the second column we'll call that vector W, so it has coordinates W1, W2, all the way to Wn. And then we'll keep having some more columns all the way to the last vector, which we'll say is Z. So its entries are Z1 all the way to Zn. Now to check this equation up here, we also need to know a transpose. So when we look at the transpose of our original matrix, what happens is that the columns of the matrix A become the rows of A transpose. So the first column of A is V1, V2, down all the way to Vn. So the first row of A transpose is going to be V1, V2, and so on to Vn. Then the second column is all the coordinates of W. So the second row of A transpose will be W1, W2, all the way to Wn. And we continue this all the way. The last column of A is this vector Z. So the last row of A transpose is going to be that same vector Z. Now before we try to compute A transpose A, we need to talk about what it means for these column vectors to be orthonormal. Remember that when we have two vectors, we can compute the dot product of them, say the dot product V dot W, by looking at the individual coordinates of the vectors. So the formula for V dot W is V1 times W1, plus V2 times W2, plus and so on, all the way to Vn Wn. Now there are two conditions we need for these vectors to be orthonormal. First of all, if we take the dot product of two different vectors, so if we take, for example, V dot W, the result we should get is zero. And this means that the vectors are orthogonal, the dot product of them is zero. The second condition for the vectors to be orthonormal is that if we take the dot product of a vector with itself, so instead of v dot w, we do v dot v, this should always equal 1. And when we do the dot product v dot v, that's the same as the magnitude of v squared. So this second condition says that the magnitude of each of these vectors should be 1. Now that we have these two conditions, we can compute A transpose A. The first thing we need to do is just take these matrices for A transpose and A and plug them in down here. So here I've written out the expressions for A transpose and then for A. Now we need to remember the formula for multiplying two matrices. So let's say we're multiplying these matrices and we're looking at the result and we want to find what is the number that's in the first row and the first column. The way that we do that is we look at the first row of this first matrix, A transpose, and the first column of the second matrix, A. And to compute this number, we take V1 times V1, plus V2 times V2, plus V3 times V3, and so on all the way down to Vn times Vn. But if we think about that formula, that looks a little familiar, because that's exactly what we were doing up here with the dot product V dot W except in this case we're taking the dot product of v with itself. We're doing v1 v1 plus v2 v2 plus and so on all the way to vn vn. So this first entry in the top left of our result matrix is actually just v dot v. Now let's look at the first row second column. If we want to do that we look at the first row of a transpose and the second column of A. And then we're going to have V1 times W1 plus V2 W2 plus V3 W3 and so on all the way to Vn Wn. But that's exactly the same thing as V dot W. So that's going to be this second entry here. And we can continue this pattern. So if we want the entry in the first row third column, we would take the first row of A transpose and the third column of A and that would get us v dot the third vector in this matrix A. And so this pattern will continue all the way until we get to v dot z.
which is going to be the first row of A transpose and the last column of A. The other rows of this matrix are also going to be similar. So if we want to find the numbers in the second row, that just means we look at the second row of A transpose. So instead of looking at V dot V, the second row will have W dot V because it's going to be W1 V1 plus W2 V2 and so on to WN VN. And then the second column will have W dot W and so on all the way to W dot Z. And this exact same thing is going to continue until we get to the last row and then we'll just have this vector Z. So the entries will be Z dot V, Z dot W and so on to Z dot Z. So this formula for A transpose A, this works for any matrix because we can always look at the columns of a matrix as vectors. And then we can write A transpose A using all of these dot products right here. The question is, what happens if the matrix A is orthogonal? So what happens if these vectors V and W and so on to Z are orthonormal? Well, let's see what would happen in this matrix. Let's try to write out the results. So first, let's look at the diagonal entries of the matrix. When we look at A transpose A, the diagonal entries are V dot V, W dot W, and so on down to Z dot Z. So it's the dot product of every vector with itself. But one of the conditions for these vectors to be orthonormal is that any vector dot itself is equal to 1. So these diagonal entries, v dot v, w dot w, z dot z, and everything in the middle, those are just going to be ones. So the entire diagonal of our matrix A transpose A, that's just going to be ones. And what about all the rest of the entries? What about anything that's not on the diagonal? Well, all of these entries that aren't on the diagonal, these are the dot products of two different vectors. So we have v dot w here, for example, or v dot z, or w dot z, and so on. But the other condition for vectors to be orthonormal is that if we take the dot product of two different vectors, the answer we get is zero. So all of these off-diagonal entries, these are the dot product of two different vectors, and so they're all going to be zero. Everything that's not on the diagonal is just zeros. And so the result that we get for A transpose A is ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And that's exactly the definition of the identity matrix. So what we've shown is that if A is an orthogonal matrix, then A transpose A is the identity. And we can also argue in the other direction, because if A transpose A is the identity, well, we know that A transpose A is this expression down here. So if A transpose A equals the identity, first of all, V dot V equals one, because that's the first entry in the identity matrix. Similarly, W dot W equals one, and so on, Z dot Z equals one. So this first condition has to be satisfied. And if we look at the off diagonal entries, we see that V dot W, that has to equal this entry in the identity matrix, but that's just zero. So v dot w is zero, v dot z is zero, w dot z is zero, and so on. So this condition actually forces the columns of the matrix A to be orthonormal vectors. So we can always look at the columns of a matrix A as vectors. And then we have a formula for A transpose A in terms of the dot products between those column vectors. If we want this matrix to equal the identity matrix, then the diagonal entries have to equal one, which means that any of the column vectors dot itself equals one. And if we want any of the off diagonal entries to be zero, then the dot product between two different column vectors has to equal zero. And that's how we prove that a matrix is orthogonal if and only if A transpose A is the identity.